Hi, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. Back. Uh, well, the NHL f uh, season is finally underway, Jim. Uh, what did you think of the first uh, game of the season for the Edmonton Oilers on Sunday night when they beat the... Uh, the wingless pens, I would say. The, they, they didn't really have, have uh, much of an offense going there. What did you think there? I thought that was nice. It was yeah. nice to see them get the win, but it, um, seeing Ryan Nugent Hopkins uh, slot home his first goal of, oh, the, yeah. uh, well, of his career, that was a nice touch, a nice kind of storybook end to, uh, to the, the home opener. It, kind of strange that they started the season so much later than everybody else. Yeah. But, you know, um, I thought overall they played pretty well. Obviously, no um, Evgeny Malkin, maybe... Uh, you know, didn't test the defense uh, as much as you know a, a full a full Pens team might have, but I thought overall it was a good effort. I was kind of interested to see uh, Devin Dubna getting the start over uh, Nikolai Habibulin, but uh, I thought he played really well. And a team that's not very uh, not traditionally very good in the shootout, but won in a shootout. Absolutely. Uh, I was really interested going back to, I mean, no Malkin and no Crosby. I mean, we've known about Crosby for a little while, but we didn't know about Malkin. But at the end of the game, there was a five-minute major by Ryan Smith, and, yeah. and we were down a man for five five minutes. I just, I got to figure, also with the majors, you know, if you score, you stay on the stay on the power, uh, the power play, right? I got to figure if there were pen, if the pens were actually out there, if there was like Malkin and Crosby, it would have been like 15 nothing <laughs> just in those five minutes. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. The, you know, the, the Oilers seem to have a, a a pretty good PK like I, yeah. I like the variety of players to see out on the that was kill. great so you, you know we didn't see Horkoff for, for the first period it was great other yeah, than well, on, on the penalty kill and, and it was nice to see he doesn't have to be <coughs> always out there is what I'm saying I like Horkoff yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I like to see that there's a you know you got you got basically all of your top players penalty killing and on power no yeah, it's great no it was really nice to see well, uh, you know, now that the uh, the rest of the NHL has finally got underway, uh, how about some predictions? Let's start with the Oilers. Uh, which young player will make the biggest impact for Edmonton? And I we can we include sophomores on this. That's okay, what okay, yeah, okay. Sophomores on uh, this. I think Taylor Hall is going to have an yeah. because I thought he played outstanding on, on opening night. He was night everywhere. There. Yeah, and they're going to start to go in for him. I think he's going to be the, the standout for the Oilers. I got to agree. Uh, the confidence that he showed was absolutely amazing, although I am going to give a little sub subhead to Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who if he can keep making the passes like he did, yeah. then oh, man. They, like, there, were, there were things he shot in the middle I see other Oilers try to do, but he hits the, hits the guy with yeah. the pass, right? There was a beauty drop pass to Hemsky oh, that almost, God. That almost no resulted kidding. in a goal. So, uh, so, yeah, Hall, I think, is it, I think, I think Hall is going to get 80 points. I but if, but if Nugent points. Hopkins is feeding Hemsky all season... Oh, God, maybe Hemsky will do it. Yeah. Uh, if there's even a Battle for uh, net time. Who gets more uh, more gigs? I well, especially since they gave uh, Dubnik the start. I thought that was kind of I, I, was, I was sort of surprised by that. I yeah. think maybe he'll end up with more starts. Yeah, maybe. I think so too. Because I think he, I mean, he's so big, and he had a he had a pretty good season last year. And I think he and he seems to be getting better. And I think it's with confidence. So the more games he plays, the more confidence he's going to yeah. get. Hopefully. Uh, Here's the here's the one that everybody's talking about though. Where do you think the Edmonton Oilers are going to end up at the end of the season? Yeah, everybody's pretty much saying last. Pretty I'm going to say somewhere between eighth and last. I'm going to say kind of in the middle there. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I, I just, half. I, I think it'll be a successful season if they're at least in the hunt. Yeah. In the last month or two. And I think for sure, I don't think they're going to finish last. I think they're going to be in the hunt. I think we're going to see them uh, push for a playoff spot, uh, especially because they love to go 8 for 12 in the last, you know, yeah. 12 but, games. They but you know, the, the thing is, once you get in the playoff, getting in is the hardest part. Yeah, that's so, right. So, there you go. Uh, on to the league at large, who will win each conference, do you think? Eastern? Uh, East, I think is going to be a battle, but I'm going to say it'll probably be the Capitals again. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. I think uh, I think a healthy I, I, I think a healthy um, Sidney Crosby and a healthy Malkin and a well coached Pittsburgh Penguins team takes it. Okay. Uh, how about in the West? I'm gonna give it to San Jose. San Jose. I think, I think they made the changes in the offs. They're already a great team. I think they made the changes in the off season that might get them just, you know, may, maybe like they're always a contender, but yeah. like a, an actual team that might win the cup yeah, yeah. as opposed to what they have been. Well, exactly. <laughs> I think I I th still think, and we'll get to this, but San Jose. I think San Jose is going to win uh, win the cup, but uh, I think Vancouver is going to win the back to back Presidents trophies. I think. Um, all right, uh, where are we at? Uh, which team will be the biggest surprise on each side of the league? 
I think there's a chance that the Columbus Blue Jackets might be uh, a, a surprise. Rick Nash is so good. Yeah, Nash uh, and Carter along yeah. with Crossbow. They, I think they had two points each in their first game. Now, yeah, I'm yeah. not. That's obviously not going to happen every game, but I think they could be. Uh, they could be a surprise because I, I, I. Again, that's a team that I feel like has been kind of on the cusp, but. Yeah, I've sort of been like Rick Nash on an island by himself. Well, exactly. Um, I don't think. I guess this is no surprise this year, but LA Kings, I think, are gonna are gonna be really good this year, yeah. especially if Dustin Petter can show on a second line or even a third line that he can play. So, uh, and then Kopitar's sick. So, yeah, Kopitar's pretty sick. How about on the East? You know, there, there's there's a lot of teams that I just sort of see in like a clump. Yeah. Well, exactly. From like from like fourth to tenth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I don't really know. I don't really know in the, in the East, but I think uh, I think the New York Islanders might, yeah. and it, and it might not be that much of a surprise, just because they're a team that's kind of you know uh, they they're developing young players, and they, I mean they're getting their top defenseman back, who missed all of last season. But I think they're going to make a big jump in the standings. For me, it's actually the Florida Panthers. I want to see how all the old guys who yeah. decide, like I want to see how. Uh, guys like that are going to do this year, and I, I, you know what? I think uh, if they get some goaltending, they might, uh, they might, might do all right. Absolutely. Uh, which oldie will have the biggest uh, impact? Timo Solani, Nick Lindstrom, or Yarmer Yager? Well, try not to say Nick Lindstrom right off the bat. Cause you're just right <laughs> off. You see that goal he scored? Last <laughs> <year? laughs> I, well, it, it was Timo. Uh, Timo Solani and Nick Lindstrom battled for it last year. Really? They, were, they both had pretty outstanding seasons. I kind of hope that Yarmir Yager has the biggest impact. Yeah, no, that'd be nice yeah. to see. No, absolutely. Um, I agree. I think Yarmir Yager's going to do all right. Uh, you saw his pass to Giroux. I think we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was absolutely unbelievable. So um, Here's a big story for me. Uh, my most hated person in the league is absolutely Sean Avery. But I'm going to have to change that because he's not in the league anymore. <laughs> Uh, he started the season in the, in the AHL with the Connecticut Whale after being waived by the New York Rangers. Do you think his uh, yeah, waved <laughs> goodbye? His uh, tumultuous relationship with uh, Coach John Tortorella had anything to do with that? Maybe. I, I, he he was trying to be as diplomatic as possible when talking about it afterwards. Said you know he just he just didn't he didn't make the team. Yeah. We have better players than he, than him right now. Uh, I guess the door's always open for a return because that's just the nature of the game. There's that's injuries. Right. And, um, but uh, Tortorella just kind of straight up said we have better players than him. He had to earn a spot and he didn't earn a spot. And and rightfully so. Still got to pay him $4 mil a year. Yeah, I know. For, for this year. Doesn't look like he's going to go over to, the, to Europe to play either, though. So it looks like it's financially sense for him to stay in Connecticut, which yeah. is interesting. I wonder what he's going to do spending his money in Connecticut. <laughs> uh, could he be back, though? Well, Glenn Sather said that uh, you know he he likes he likes him and he likes the kind of entertainment factor of who Sean Avery is. Yeah. But he also said, like, you know, we're trying to run a successful hockey team here, and if we'll the guy's not goes. good enough to play, then. But I it, I was kind of surprised to see him. Well, surprised but not surprised. Yeah. Like, Boy, I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Yeah, I just I hate him. the the whole uh, the whole Wayne Simmons called me this. Uh, yes. That's right. You know, I'm. I'm certain that he said the exact same thing or worse. Oh, for sure. A hundred times. A hundred times. Absolutely. Uh, give me 30 seconds on what the update on the Oilers Arena talks is. Well, this week, uh, Mayor Mandel and uh, the city manager, along with the Cates group, are going to meet Gary Bettman in uh, New York. In New York, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so, I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but, you know, you're starting to get some, you're starting to hear some talk about... Oh well, what if they move the team? And, yeah. And oh, they don't have enough leverage to move the team, and I I think it's probably a bad sign that that they're heading to uh, that they're being summoned. Yeah. To, <laughs> to, to speak, the principal's office. Sort of yeah. Thing. To, to speak with Mr. Bettman, um, but that that's the that's the status right now, and there's that October thirty first deadline to buy some lo looming. Yeah. So, it's tough to, tough to tough call to say, right now, yeah. but I'm gonna say it's not not looking great. Uh, we're going to move on to the Gabbies now. This is the good and bad by you. We take the best and the worst of the world of sport, and we usually make fun of it. Uh, we'll start with, uh, you know, it's been a hockey-heavy episode so far, but yes, we sir. have to give a good to the NHL for finally being back. It's been a long and, frankly, quite tragic summer yeah. uh, for the hockey community between the deaths and all the concussion talk, and it's a whole bunch of stuff there. And so it's actually great to be back playing Hot. Yeah, a lot, a lot of negatives. Yeah, but now it's just back to the actual game itself. So yeah, that's which is good. really nice. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of hockey, 
the Boston Bruins raised their Stanley Cup banner this uh, this past week. Yep. But it was Yarmir Yager uh, kind of stealing the show. The, the Flyers beat the Bruins. Yager uh, sent a beautiful pass to Claude Giroux, who scored a beautiful goal. Yeah. Yarmir Yager hitting a milestone with his 16, uh, 1600th point in his first game back. Pretty good way to restart your career. Absolutely. Now he can retire. I think yeah, he was only going to come back to well, 1600 points. Yeah, I'd be yeah. mad if I finished on like 99. something 99. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, good for him. Um, a good to local MMA fighter, Ryan Gimo, who defended his light heavyweight title on Friday against Ramu Sek... See, why did you give me that name? So I practiced it like 15 times before, <laughs> before we started the show, too. So could you at MFC 31 here in Edmonton. Uh, he fights out of the Hayabusa Training Center in St. Albert and then now has won 16 straight wins. Uh, good for him, and, and hopefully we can see him starting to move his career up the ranks a little bit. Yeah, and like you think that's good for his career. Uh, I heard he's going to be in the next issue of Prospect Magazine. But oh, that's very other, nice. That's a whole other thing. I like it. Uh, a bad to Tiger Woods this week. Uh, he dropped out of golf. Sorry, sorry. How many times have we yeah, had Tiger Woods on the bad side? And, and rightfully so, every well, time, Jim. Keep going, sorry. Dropped out of the top 50 for the first time in almost 15 years. Yeah. Now, I was in grade <laughs> 6, I think, right. when he entered the top 50. Wow. Wow. But now he's out. Yeah. And somebody threw a hot dog at him. This last and weekend. then he missed the shot. Like, yeah. I, like <laughs> I guess the guy threw the hot dog and then like lay on the ground and put his hands behind his back. He was ready to go. <laughs> I'm telling. I would get ha if is I that, knew is that racist. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really up on all the. But <laughs> maybe. Maybe the guy didn't know that it maybe, was racist. Yeah. Or maybe he thought it was, but it's not. Right, right, right. Uh, maybe he was just caught up in the excitement <laughs> of the shot. <laughs> Anyway, um, back to the ice for a bad Carolina's UC Jokinen, who put uh, his team down 5-3 on three on Friday uh, when he backhanded the puck at the ref over a delayed penalty that was about to be called. Isn't it a little bit early in the season to, like, and get that kind of stuff? Like, he's not going to get any love from any of the referees the rest <laughs> yeah. of the season. Like, like, it's game one. I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's got some teenage angst. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But uh, he's going to be a player this year if he can stay out of the box. Well, uh, if he can stop shooting pucks at refs. <laughs> that's, that's, that's point number one, yes. Yeah. Uh, once again, a bad to the NCAA, and almost as many as Tiger Woods on the bad side. And of again, rightfully so. Yeah, remember those Ohio State players who were yes. suspended five games uh, for taking improper benefits? Uh, uh, Terrell Pryor was one of those. Right. Uh, one of one of those players, and a few others, but one of those guys that got the five games uh, has been suspended an additional five games for getting paid too much for his summer job. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he, he made like 730 more dollars than they deemed oh, wow. he should have been. 730 Like, for the work he did, he got paid too much. Brutal. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Because, like, I know NCAA executives never get bonuses. <laughs> no, no, they don't so, make millions of dollars. like, I understand why they'd, be, yeah. like, why they'd be upset about that, sure. but... Yeah, that's brutal. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, no, absolutely. So the guy's going to get to play two games this season. Oh, man. For $730. <laughs> yeah. Uh, get it together, NCAA. Uh, the punchline, uh, we're going to move on to that here. ESPN dropped the classic Hank Williams Jr. intro to Monday Night Football this past week. Are you ready for some? Oh, no, not anymore. <laughs> not uh, anymore. After some interesting comments from Williams about politics, speaking about Barack Obama playing golf with House Speaker John Boehner, Williams said... It'd be like Hitler playing golf with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, adding, they're the enemy. Both sides said it was their decision, but I'm, I'm going. Yeah, yeah, and he's, really, he's cutting a new song yeah. and dissing ESPN. Uh, why do people talk politics? When they... Like, if you're not a, if you're not a, a pundit, stay away just from don't it. talk about politics. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to move on to the quick hits. How likely is it that at least part of...